Okay. This is Michael. Hey, Michael. How you doing? Uh, my name is Christian Hollum. Um, you called us and uh, about us coming in there to, to meet with you. Hey, Christian. How are you doing, my man? We're doing as good as we can. Yep, yep. I understand. Um, so uh, j just explain to me real briefly what um, uh, what what's going on. Cool. What's going on? Um, but I, you know, my, I just I just heard that you know, y'all are having some issues and, and uh, we're dealing we're dealing with some serious corruption uh, here, Michael. Um, we were we were uh, traveling through the state of uh, or the territory, however you want, state of Alabama as missionaries, um, and uh, we had our baby in the state of Alabama. Um, and there's a lot involved here. There's a lot of uh, officers and uh, officials uh, covering things up. I have a lot of audio of sure. uh, evidence of all of this. I have uh, the mayor. Uh, of Heflin, Alabama, admitting that, that that it's kidnapping, but there's nothing that he can do about it. Um, four judges have recused themselves from our case, and uh, our baby was kidnapped. Um, illegal search and seizure eight months ago from the hospital, 33 hours after he was born, under false evidence, um, false accusations, and fraud, and uh, mistaken identity. But uh, originally. If you're going to take someone's child, ultimately, I say there has to be some form of injury, which ultimately it should be probable cause. Well, in our case, uh, they busted into our um, our uh, hospital room and uh, with no warrant and said that the probable cause was uh, us being two other individuals from Arizona that were not. Uh, these people had similar names. Uh, but they were not they were not us and we and that was all proven to be uh false uh and we gave them three forms of identification that night, and that was not good enough because this was a targeted hit. They came in there on a mission to steal our child, and that's exactly what they did and We have overwhelming evidence uh to prove all of this and uh okay, okay miss mr holm is is it home or home it's mr Hollum Hollum okay um just real quick just explain to me. Okay, so yeah, your child was born, you said, six months ago? Eight months ago. Eight months ago, and then <clears throat> um, when was it, was your child taken by by uh, by social workers or social services? or, or Take, um, Yeah, D, uh, DHR, that's correct. DHR, correct. Yeah. Okay, um, is, now you, um, is, there, is there an investigation currently ongoing or um, – or, or well, we've been we've been in court now for uh, dealing with the state of Alabama for eight months, and uh, it's it's gotten um, we don't feel safe in Alabama anymore. We've left Alabama and we've come up here to D.C. because uh, all they're doing is is they're trying to drag us through their court system and and drag it all out uh, because they know that they've messed up. And rather than hitting the oops button and returning our child, they would rather uh, absorb the federal funds. Um, and uh, instead of taking a hit any other way, what uh, was their uh, what was their reasoning that they gave you guys for um, for mistaken, uh, mistaken identity? Mistaken, mistaken identity. Yeah, it was mistaken identity of us being these two other individuals uh, that that came out to be um, uh, somebody else, and that was all proven to be straight. But then they couldn't. But then uh, instead of uh, uh, they started backpedaling and trying to find other evidence. Um, and, uh, and, and, and now it's all been proven to be false, uh, and we have evidence of all of this, and, uh, we've gone to the FBI, uh, we've presented our case to the FBI, we've turned in a criminal affidavit to the FBI, uh, the first FBI senior agent of Birmingham, Alabama kidnapping, uh, Agent Bradford, he's a senior agent, he told us that he feels that he would not load it into the computer, all the documents that we gave him, if he didn't feel there was something there. He said that he feels it's religious rights violations and some color of law violations, and that he has to transfer it over to Gadsden, Alabama, where they are over top of uh, Heflin. And uh, the new agent, uh, John Hamilton from Gadsden, called me. We met, we went in to meet with him, but he's very young, or he's younger, uh, and uh, he didn't really seem... Uh, uh, too inclined to help as much as the first guy, sure. and uh, so what? He said to sure. go, to, and then he told us to go to the attorney general. We tried to go to the attorney general, 
they then told us that they didn't have any jurisdiction, which I put that audio out on Facebook. Uh, and then right after that, um, the DHR from Cleburne County went to the Attorney General to then get the Attorney General from Alabama to go to the Attorney General of Georgia uh, to try and get information for them after they just told us that they don't have jurisdiction to help us. So it's all a one-sided campaign for federal funds. Hmm. So there is currently an FBI investigation on, ongoing as as of the twenty as of June twenty seventh, like today. There well, is they, a current FBI investigation on, ongoing. Well, it's not. I don't, I don't know if it's ongoing or not because uh, John, they th they told us that they couldn't help us. Uh, the last call that I had with John Hamilton asked, after I tried to call for relief one more time. Uh, um, he told me on the phone that uh, that he wasn't going to get involved in our civil case, and that uh, that I need, yeah, that it would that it could take a few years for for them to do anything, anyways. Uh, and then that I just need to follow along with the loopholes of uh, what DHR is trying to uh, make us jump through, and that I thought that I was being the authority, which is really it makes no sense because here I am calling people of authority, trying to get help because our baby has been stolen from us. So it was a, a mistaken identity. Like, was it? Was it, I'm just like confused. I'm just a little confused about why they would think that that was the case. Uh, if yeah, it's your, if there's it's a, your child, you know. Right. There's a lot of stuff. Uh, oh no, it was a mistaken identity of them thinking that. Uh, okay, my name is Christian Clark Hollum. My wife's name is Danielle Hollum. They thought mm -hmm. that they thought that I was a nurse from the hospital. I guess googled our names for for whatever reasons. I'm not really sure. But Google my name, and it came back to a Richard Christian Hollum in Arizona, which was out on bail or something for human trafficking and drug smuggling. Which is ironic because our 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 our, our kid was stolen from from the state that's trying to put that you know thinking that's us, and then they thought that my wife was Daniela Ruiz which had the same um, charges, and that's who they thought that we were. After we and, and we gave them three forms of identification that night, but that wasn't good enough because, like I said, they came in and this was a targeted hit. It didn't matter what we said; they made it. They made it all up. You see, they had to have probable cause to come in and steal our child, so they made probable cause. They made false probable cause, and even though we gave them, we gave them actual factual evidence that that was not us. It did not matter. They still stole him that night. I have I have audio of the social worker uh, that was there that night uh, and uh, told me that the reason why they were taking him is because of our uh, our odd beliefs <clears throat> and because of the um, and because of the chaos that night because of the um, children's crimes investigator that came in with those uh, fake accusations. Hmm. I'm just trying to. Yeah, man, there's, there's there's no way to understand what's going on because it's not going to make sense in any um any moral uh, sound mind. But we have all the evidence. It's been out there for a while now. Uh, we've sure. been we've been dealing with this for a while. It makes it you, you can try and make sense of it all that you want. It's not going to make any sense. These people have mm -hmm. stolen our child and they're trying to cover it up. That's the only thing that makes sense to get mm -hmm. federal funds. Mhm. Mm um. Now, have you have you tried following up with the the senior investigator at the FBI? I did. He told me that uh, that he couldn't get involved because he had already transferred it over to the new FBI agent. And I told him that uh, that, that FBI agent um, is not helping us as much as he was. And he said, well, you need to try and contact his supervisor because he said that I can't I can't go over there because it's not my jurisdiction. So pretty much if I was in Agent Bradford's jurisdiction, the senior agent, something would be happening right now and he'd be helping us. But because sure. But because I'm in john hamilton's jurisdiction uh uh john hamilton is not the same mindset as agent bradford so this whole jurisdiction thing is causing us a whole bunch of problems it's either right or it's right or it's wrong or it's wrong you know right, we, we need right, some right. relief mm -hmm. um the, the whole reason I'm, I'm hesitant is if there is an ongoing fbi investigation i'm not sure there's any way that that we could you know Really, I'm not sure if we could actually do anything at, at, at well you you y'all could y'all could help us y'all could make sure that we speak to the right people uh to to get our baby back this has been it's been eight months now yes this, sir. this has gone on long enough now you're in Cleveland county is that correct 
that's where our, you, that's you, where our child is being held hostage. Uh, we don't live there. Um, so, sure. Um, and Heflin, I, I've been through Heflin many a time. Um, it's a great, great spot of the of um, Alabama. There, so we've got state offices that deal with um, c- casework. Uh, mo- most of the, the legislative um, work has been is dealt with up here in D.C. The, um, I understand you're up here now, and we're, and we're more than happy to meet with you um, cool. in, in our office if uh, if that would if if um, if you think that would be helpful. That would be um, excellent because then we could actually show you uh, what we have. I can even let you hear uh, audio of. Uh, uh, of all these people that uh, so that way you don't have to take it from me but you can hear it out of the horse's mouth so to speak about what they're doing and how they're violating us mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so most so legislative work is um, is primarily dealt with up here in DC and casework which is what the, our state offices deal with they are the ones who are they liaise with the agencies so if um, you know, say some someone's having trouble with the VA, um, you're, since you're in Cleburne County, if someone from Cleburne County was having problems with the VA, we would have Christian there in our Birmingham office take care of it, and they would be able, they would be the ones advocating for you to, to the agency on your behalf. Um, and so it, in, in 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 that light, I would like, uh, you know, I more like I said, more than happy to meet with you while you're up here in DC. Um, but it, um, I think you'd have a much better shot of, of getting some results, um, you know, getting not getting some results, getting, you know, um, they would know the proper avenues to go through at, at the state level. Um, and I can refer you, I can give well, you Well, uh, I can tell you right now is that uh, we're not going back to the state of Alabama because we don't feel safe there. And I'll, whenever we come in to meet with you, I'll show you why. They have false charges on paper uh, where they, uh, I guess they were trying to uh, set us up somehow opening up these cases with false charges. Uh, so with that being said, we are dealing with a tyrannical state uh, or a tyrannical uh, judicial system to where we do not feel safe in that state. It is nothing for a judge, a corrupt judge, to throw somebody in jail and then for 10 years, 20 years, and then every, that person is forgot about. You know, sure. So we're, not, sure. we're well, not going to allow that to happen to us. Okay, We are dealing with a situation here where, where we have actual factual evidence of some serious corruption uh, and uh, why, you know, where, where there's a lot at stake for people, uh, especially higher up in official uh, positions uh, that are willing to do whatever to cover that up. Yes, sir. Well, well, I, I can guarantee you that, um, you know, Senator Shelby and our staff here, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're here to serve the people of, of the state of Alabama, you know, in, in, in the most fair way possible. I mean, absolutely. So, um, in that light, it, again, you're more, I'm more than happy to set up a meeting with you here in DC. Uh, but and again, I think, I really do think that Christian in our uh, Birmingham office, um, who handles casework, she, uh, he would be very, very, very helpful. And, um, yeah, I mean, he, he deals with this stuff a lot. Um, so he, he would know exactly who to talk to, um, and exactly how to, well, we have a, um, we have a situation where it's a, it's an illegal search and seizure. You know, there, there, there was no warrant. They just bombarded into our room and, uh, with false, uh, uh, uh false probable cause, you know, and on, yes, the, on the FBI's website, uh, it says the FBI is the primary federal agency responsible for investigating allegations, allegations regarding violations of federal civil rights statutes human trafficking color of law violations uh, sure. uh remember the first uh fbi agent told me that he felt that it was religious rights violations and color of law violations we also have on their website it states fbi website false arrest and fabrication of evidence the fourth amendment of the U- u.s constitution guarantees the right against unreasonable searches or seizures uh, it is in the abuse of that discretionary sure. power, such as an unlawful detention or illegal confiscation of property, that a violation of person's civil rights may occur. Now, obviously, we do not view our child as a possession. Uh, now, yes, sir. Yeah, my, my, my wife and I did create him, so he is our created DNA. We did create him. We have a higher claim to him than anybody. Now, with that being said, if I see somebody uh, uh, beating their kid up across the street or something, I'm gonna walk across the street and I'm gonna I'm gonna stop it, and then I'm gonna call the authorities and find out why somebody's beating uh, beating the kid up. So 
if if there's some form of injury, that's when you intervene. You can't come up with what if scenarios or or uh, their house isn't big enough or all these certain things to uh, try and enforce your way of life on somebody. There has to be some form of injury. Yes, um, sir. And now now have have you tried to reach out to uh, to an attorney to maybe you know file a uh, you know file a a, a a case against DHR or Okay, so what we fired, we have fired uh, four attorneys now. Um, uh, the first uh, two attorneys were were a part of their operative. Uh, what I mean is, is after they stole our child, we have a 72-hour shelter case hearing, and uh, we went into the courthouse, and we were just going to walk into the courthouse room and demand our baby back because we knew that we weren't these two other individuals that they were falsely accusing us of. So with that being said, um uh two uh two lawyers that or one lawyer started off with her name is Jennifer Argo she bombarded us at the uh courthouse so she premeditatively or, or planned with these people or whatever she already knew who we were without us knowing her uh she came at us and she said hey look y'all have been violated this is going on here if y'all want to get your baby back you need to listen to me i can do it i can do this blah 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 so we were under duress our our little baby was just born the day before and ripped off of my wife's chest as he was feeding. He was assaulted, she was assaulted. So we were under extreme duress by officials of this state. So we accepted her help out of out of hope. All right, but guess what guess where this hope got us? This hope just led us into their noose of jurisdiction. Because the moment uh, that she didn't question uh, their authority in the in the beginning of the shelter care hearing and that there was no warrant no probable cause uh it, it it just leads you right on into their jurisdiction and this lawyer knew this because she was court appointed she came at us on purpose because if we would have just went in there by ourselves and demanded our child back and there, there was no warrant they would have had to have released him but the very fact that this lawyer came up and bombarded us and went in there and uh didn't do that it wall it all worked into their little plan of uh driving or funneling us into their uh into their little web uh, so with that being said, I don't trust lawyers, um, and we don't have enough money to uh, to pay a lawyer to come and fight for us. But ultimately, I wouldn't even trust that lawyer because the entire family court system is fraud. It's based off of violating your constitutional rights to begin with. And why would any lawyer commit um, commit uh, 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 what is it uh, political uh, sabotage uh, in our situation when there's so much wrong? Uh, it, it, it's hard to find a lawyer that's going to do that because every single yes, every single lawyer we've had they've gone backwards on us in the very beginning they'll say yeah y'all mean they they've done y'all so wrong this is happening here this is happening there then all of a sudden they flip you see so it's 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 uh, uh we just get sick and tired of uh dealing with false hope and ultimately there's really no point in having a lawyer uh why do you need well a well, well, lo well a lawyer would give you legal representation in the court and uh, I understand that you you may have some um, issues with 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 certain attorneys, but I can assure you there are plenty of attorneys in Alabama that are willing to, you know, to 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 they do a lot of this pro bono type work. Our office can't cannot provide any um, any legal advice. We can give you, you know, we can we can help you as much as 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 we legally can but let me ask you, let me let me show you let me ask you a question real quick here michael so that way you'll understand uh what what i'm speaking of and the uh the perception of life that i have you and i are st let's say you and i are standing in nature okay and uh we have a tree right next to us a tree that was cre created by the same thing that created you and i okay all right now that tree is our tree that was given to us by the creator that's ours you and i to share together all right now in today's time uh that tree is now owned and operated because everything is owned all the land is owned and operated and therefore uh it, it becomes a situation where it's not our tree anymore all right now your car you have your car your car is your possession now let's say you and i are standing next to your car well, that's no longer something where it's equal. Now that's your car, and I'm just standing next to your car, okay? Now, if we're back in nature, and if if uh, if I'm with my family, and if I haven't caused any harm to anybody, 
uh, then there's no statutes or policies or whatever that have any value in nature. Okay, now let's go over to the car or the commerce way of life. If we're in commerce or if we're next to a car, there's plenty of statutes and policies and all these fictitious views of life uh, because in order to exist within a commerce way of life, there has to be statutes because there's so much chaos of uh, organization of uh, street lights and all these things and how things have to be filed into court and how you have to do this and all that. Well, my point here is is that our baby was stolen and we don't we don't have anything to do with a commerce way of life. All right, so lawyers are for people of business, people of commerce. Family court is fraud. If there is no injury, no policies or statutes have any value at all in family. It makes absolutely no sense unless it's they're trying to use it as social engineering and convert people into their way of life. That is the only time I could, and, and, and that and that's completely goes against the creator. So do, you, so do you see where my perception is of life? Yes, sir. Um, I, I'm just having a, I'm just having a little difficulty trying to, trying to see exactly what, um, what we could do to help you besides, uh, you know, referring you to to our state offices and who who deal with this, um, yeah, you know, they 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 deal with this this sore situation a lot. They deal with social workers, they deal with DHR, um, you know, they they do a lot of this work on the on the state level. I'm just um, up up here in DC, we've got, you know, we're, we're I'm more than happy to to meet with you and hear you out and. Um, and, and review whatever um, whatever information you've got, um, and, and I do I do hate I hate that this is happening to you. I mean, everyone should you know should have I, I can't imagine being away from my my mother for eight months uh, as, as soon as you're born. Those are um, very terrible. Very, it's a very important time in your life. The most the um, most uh, the most important thing in life is for two equal but opposite energies, the male and female, to come together and procreate life. That is the most important, the most valuable thing in life that we could ever do is experience creation with the Creator. That has been stolen from us, that has been stolen from Him, unjustly, ungodly, unwarranted, no probable cause, no reason, and now, yes, and, 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 and the problem is, is that this family court system has become a virus. What happens is, is that they don't want to hit the oops button because because they're afraid of a lawsuit. So what so what's done is is that family court has become a two sided blade, to where uh, they come in and they intervene because there there's all these federal incentives where they're making money. All right, uh, but the problem is is that if they mess up, if social workers mess up, then it becomes a two sided blade uh, because. The grounds of the Constitution say that uh, uh, that you're being violated if, if if they you know if they do it in a way without probable cause. Uh, so that's what's happening here now. So rather than hitting the oops button and giving our child back, they would rather uh, uh, they would rather take parents, uh, funnel them through the judicial system, try and wear them out, uh, and absorb the federal funds rather than hitting the oops button because it costs them a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And I have I have audio of, of this, Michael. Sure. Uh, if you go to if you go on Facebook, uh, hashtag Free Baby H O L M. I have uh, I have um, I have audio of uh, an Arizona judge at a judges conference speaking to other judges, telling the judges that if you make a mistake in the beginning, I would not go back on it. I would keep pushing forward, and I would tell the parents that feel like they've been violated. Uh, that they can just go off into civil la la land. He says that, and he says, and it's all about getting the federal funds. I have absolutely actual factual evidence of judges saying this, and it just goes to show you the corruption and the virus mentality of these people. Yes, sir. And 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 see that and and that kind of goes to my point where if if you would present this to a to a to an attorney who, you know who. Deals and I understand you've got you've, your reservations, but there are plenty of organizations like the ACLU and um, other organizations. They declined. They declined. They, they declined. They said they don't do. They said they don't do family court, and ultimately I know why because family court is fraud. 
They they know that. The only the only real court is criminal court. That's it. Sure. Civil civil court is fraud. It it goes along with uh, just all the the business way of life and or commerce. Uh, the only real court is common law criminal court. Sure. Um, and and I mean it, if if what if what you're telling me and I'm not doubting that it's not true, but if it is, then it's you know then they're they're you know someone broke the law somewhere along the, along the way. And you know if I'm not I'm not saying that is you know that's based, strictly based on what you told me. I'm not giving you any legal advice. I I can't do that. Uh, I'm, first of all, I'm not an attorney. But um, well, they per they, they they perjured is what they did. They committed perjury and they they made false evidence and false accusations to open up our case to to uh, illegal search and seizure to then steal our baby. And see, with that that foundation alone, Michael, just with me saying that right there should be the end of the conversation in any conversation. And every single official and or judge should say, "Oh, that's it, y'all." I mean, the foundation of this case was opened up. Uh, illegally. That's it. Uh, judgment. Return the baby. That should be it. But it's not. And that's the problem. We've gotten to where uh, that, it, that it's not. And the reason why is uh, it, it's because of what I said. It, it, it's because family court has become fraud to where even the Constitution knows that. And therefore, they fear any type of civil judgment. And they would rather just try and wear the parents out uh, through the judicial system, through coercion and conversion tactics, and then using their love for their child against them and saying, hey, if you don't bend or bow to us, we're just going to keep your child for a few more years, or we might just adopt them out too. So how do you like that, Mr. Parent? You see, so this is not right, Michael. I, I, I understand, yes, sir. And, uh, you know, again, I, I've I can, what I can do is refer you to our our state office. They uh, they are Christian Sanford there and in Birmingham. We'll be happy to to help you out and help like help you. Uh, they'll start what's called a, a case file on you, and then they'll go through the proper avenues to um, deal with DHR and um, other, these other organizations. That well, it's the, ju it's, it's, it's the judges. It's the uh, it's 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 DHR, but it's also the judges. We have corruption of judges. I understand, but as far as uh, you know, DHR is the is the entity correct that 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 is um, that is now like you know is is your child in a foster care with with DHR or? Yeah, they put them in the foster care a day after they took them, and then uh, the, the moment that they took them. Yeah, okay, well, Michael, I have a uh, I have a sheet. They yeah, they're trying to adopt him out now. Um, I mean, this is a sick process, Michael. Um, I, you know, I have a, uh, I have a, I'll, I'll show you as soon as we can come in and meet you. Uh, but I have a document here from the hospital where there was no warrant or anything. And the, uh, the, it's, it's, it's called a, um, a baby identification sheet where it has his, his feet print and, uh, my wife's fingerprint on it. Uh, and then down at the bottom with, with all of her information at the top. And then down at the bottom, uh, it says, uh, I certify that the identity band matches uh, the mother's identity band and something else, and that this is my baby. And the um, the nurse uh, from the hospital that releases the baby has to sign off on it that it matches. And then the mother mother has to sign off that her band matches the baby's band. Well, guess who signed as the mother? The social worker fraudulently signed as the mother, where and there was no warrant or anything at the hospital. That is fraud, and that is kidnapping. Mm. Um, all right, all right. Let's do this. I will give you. Let me give you a uh, Christian's number in Birmingham. Give him a call and see what he can do for you. If if he can't solve it right there, um, I mean he'll 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 help you to the fullest extent that he can. Um, and he will, you know, he's very good, and he does this professionally. This is what this is what he does in. Um, in, it, we have five. We have uh, five district offices, and he, this is the one in Birmingham because because you're you'd be zoned for him because you're in Cle or your case would be in Cleburne County, um, and um, I mean he he will be able to like I, like he will be able to check it out and then you know review it in a much in a much different lens than than what I can do for you up here in D.C. right now. So um, there, so just because so it's a proximity really thing, he's a lot closer. You know what I mean? So. 
Um, and then if that if that doesn't come to fruition, feel free to give us a call back. We'll set up a meeting. Um, um, I understand you are in DC for for the for for the foreseeable future. Are you guys? I mean, Michael, uh, Michael, we uh, we don't feel safe in Alabama. We are not going back to Alabama. Okay, we we are staying in DC unless it's to pick up our baby, and we know it's by escort or by uh, an official document saying that the state of Alabama is not going to falsely uh, uh, arrest us for whatever reasons. Uh, we are not going back to the state of Alabama. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I I understand, and 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 this, you know, hopefully talking to Christian will be able, you know, he'll be able to clear up a lot more things for you, and um, he'll be able to get your, you know, get get your voice heard to, at least to DHR, and and then hopefully, um, you know, see see what they can do, um, see what they can do to help you guys out. Okay, I'll uh, I'll take that number. I'm gonna. Uh, yes, sir. And, and I'll, I'll, I'm happy to give it to you. And and again and again, like you can call you can call if if there's nothing he can do, or if you you know you still don't feel comfortable, um, you're, you're more than welcome to kind of still follow up with us, and we'll uh, we'll set a meeting up for you to come up um, come meet with us in DC. Um, and and again, like I mean, it's just it seems like a terrible situation and. You know that you know sometimes you know bad things happen to good people, and um, you know uh, that you know that that's that's awful that you're that you're not that you're not with your child right now, and that, I completely understand that. And uh, it, it's always been Senator Shelby's um, position that he, human life is 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 uh, fundamental and prior to everything else we do in society. So it, it is it's very well, my, very important my to dad protect it, especially at the very early stages of development like this. So this is something that um, you know, um, you know, I think Christian would like to take a look at and um, and uh, talk to you talk to you about and see what he can do to help you out in in uh, in, in the Birmingham office. All right. Well, let me, let me ask you a quick question here, Michael. Uh, I sent out uh, notices to uh, over 200 different well, I don't know if it was uh, it was it was a lot of uh, officials from uh, the state of Alabama all the way up to Washington D.C. Uh, Shelby, uh, Senator Shelby, uh, what, what was he at the time? He was was he a senator at the time of that? Okay. Uh, uh, why did he not respond back to my notice? Uh, we've sent out three notices uh, trying to get relief of all the showing all the violations and laws and constitutional rights, uh, everything that that uh, the state of Alabama has broken against us. Why have we not received any type of response? Um. Uh. For that. Let me let me check real quick. I'm gonna see if we've already if we've already got something on you on um in our I constituent. It's it's our database that has if people write into us. Hold on one second. Hmm. Um. If if it was if it was if you did contact us and it was. Deemed casework, like I'm talking about, like that would be kicked back to the state, where they would, if like say you mailed something to DC and it was deemed um, casework, then it would have been kicked back to the state, and Christian would have been the the person to. So it was uh, a certified. It was certified mail to Shelby. Sure, sure. Hold on one second. Let me check on this real quick. Would it be under Christian or would it be under Danielle? It could be under either or. I'm not really sure. Christian. Hold on, let me just search your last name. While you're searching that, Michael, um, do you know that we have not received one response from one official out of all the officials that we have sent certified mail to? Uh, with with a with a notice of um, a, a letter with all the violations and and all the laws and everything that's been broken against us, not one single person has responded back to us. And we have sent out three of these letters, and they have defaulted on all three of them. Let's see, is this it right here? Are you is this PO Box four three eight, Badawi, Alabama? Yes, that's is it. That you? Yes. Okay. Uh, one second. Oh. 
Okay. Says, um, legal Services Corp. Oh, I'm trying to figure this out. I think, see, I think this was sent back to the state, and um, so this actually, I guess when you sent this in, this was last year, 2016. It, it would have been a, about a month or two after they taken them, after they stole okay. them. So this is November 2016 is when they um, it says it was logged in. That'd be a month, yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. So, um, why see. hasn't anybody responded back to us with that? I'm just as confused as you are right now. It's saying it's in here, but it's not showing like the like the actual message that you sent um oh you don't you don't have the notice in there you can't see the notice the letter well it says it says that um we received a, a letter from you but it's not showing about what um what let me see this one more time Yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, th this looks like it got kicked back to the state, and um, you know they, that means it got it would have gotten forwarded back to them. Um, Michael, I, could, I would still. Could you could you do me a favor? Could you could you find out where that went? Who was who was supposed to get kicked back to, uh, and why they haven't responded to us? And that would be that would be excellent. Yes, sir. I, I, no, I'm. Mean, I look. I that's, this is something that I'm curious about now. Now, um, so also so. I'm still going to give you this number. I still think that you should uh, contact them, uh, contact Christian Sanford, and he's uh, you know he's ba he's based in Birmingham at the federal building there. He, I understand you're not there, but and you don't feel comfortable going in back, but um, you know he's he's more than you know this is what he does for a living, and um, he helps people. He was li the liaison for Senator Shelby's constituents and agencies. So, um, you know, he he will he will be he'll be much more knowledgeable about all of this, and um, you know, I I really do think that that's that's going to be your best bet is going through our going through our state office. Well, I would uh, I'd be glad to speak to him, Michael. Absolutely. Here, you you ready? You got a pen and paper? I, I'm ready. All right. All right. Numbers two zero five. Two zero five. Seven three one. Seven three one. One three eight four. One three eight four. Yes, sir. And the fax number there, just in case if you need it, is uh, two zero five. Okay. Seven three one. Seven three one. One three eight six. One three eight six. Yes, sir. And uh, so, I, I would say give him a call, see what he can do to, uh, you know, see if, see if he can't contact someone for you um, down there in the state. I mean, that's that's what he does. And um, you know, I, I I really you know it's, it's a terrible situation, and um, um, you know I, I really do hope that that something that you guys get an answer pretty soon. We do too because we miss our baby and he misses us, Michael. And uh, you know, yes, uh, this situation is uh, unbelievably. Uh, I mean, it's just an atrocity here. What's happening? Uh, so many things are wrong. Uh, we have things where four judges have, I think it's three or four judges, have recused themselves from our case. Uh, we have so many things being covered up. We have notices, just as you have just witnessed, it, uh, witnessed uh, that we have sent out seven months ago trying to find relief uh, from every single official from, from bottom to top all the way up to Washington, D.C. Um, and uh, we have sent out three of these notices uh we haven't heard or respond or nobody has responded back to us and um uh i mean do we not live in a country where where we're supposed to uh protect the innocent do we not live in a country uh where we can be free and and, and just uh 
Um, a- a- absolutely, absolutely, and I do think that I do think that still exists. I think that, um, you know, I think that we 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 still should be able to, um, you know, trust some unbiasedness in the in the legal system. I do think that that's kind of important. So, you know, my not that I can give you legal advice or any any you know. Um, you know, I, I would still suggest getting getting a, an attorney that you trust, maybe through through a friend or or someone else that you that you guys know down there in Alabama. We don't and, know. Uh, we don't know anybody in the state of Alabama. Um, yes. Sir. And and, and you no. Know, and ultimately, here, Michael, the, the thing here is, is that um, yes, you have court systems, but why should anybody have to deal with a court system when their child has been kidnapped? It should be as simple. Um, as authorities uh, go, or the, or the sheriff of 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 that county, not allowing that to happen. Court is for commerce way of life. Uh, family court is nonsense, and this makes absolutely no sense uh, that the FBI, out of all people, after we have presented everything to them, is not helping us. Uh, we we. I mean, uh, the hope that you have in a system that's per, that's supposed to protect your rights uh, to be free um, and, and your religious rights uh, is failing us, and uh, it should not it should not be this way. We should not have. Okay, it's like this, Michael. Somebody somebody steals your vehicle, and then you come to me and tell me about your vehicle being stolen because I'm an authority figure where I should be helping you. But then I tell you, well, hey, listen, what what are the uh, what are the thieves telling you that you have to do to get your vehicle back? What have you have you gone to uh, have you gone and speak to them about uh, whatever they're asking uh, for you to do to get your vehicle back? Does that make sense to you, uh, Michael? Yes, sir. And and you know I I again this this is something that um i think that it it will be dealt with um i, I think that christian's going to have he's going to be your best bet to um at least at least from our office so, you know it's it, if there is an fbi investigation going ongoing you know um that that's something to to take into account as well um but christian will have you know he'll be able to he'll be able to to deal with the um um different agencies for you and uh you know that's what that's what he does down there so um you know okay um, yes sir and, and 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 absolutely feel free to give us a call back here uh in dc or our dc office um you know if, if um if, if we can be helpful and, and for like if we can be helpful again um um well are, are you gonna are you gonna call and find out why uh uh, the letters that we sent out, no one has responded back to us. Yes, sir. And and I would still and I would also suggest you call the Birmingham office as well. But I'm I'm gonna call Christian here shortly and and figure out what's going on. Okay. All right. Well, Michael, thank you for uh, for giving us a call. And um, no, uh, absolutely, absolutely. And 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 again, that you know, um, that, that not that I don't know if this happens often, um, but I do think that. You know, this is something that um, people should be should take a look at and 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 try to try to help you guys get you know do what you can. So, um, and absolutely. And and so I'm going to give a call to Christian here. I suggest you give him a, uh, the Birmingham office a call, leaving a message, um, and then go. We're going through the um, contact me page on Facebook, or not on Facebook on um, Senator Shelby's website, and um, because that that's a, that's another way to. Um, get the message correctly to the to the right person. So if it is if it's casework, it'll go to the appropriate staffer. Um, um, again, our our staff system brought this to our attention, and 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 it's very important to um, to to my attention. And I think it's very important that um, you know people stay civically engaged and and are communicating with their legislators. And um and yeah, and, and we're we're here to help you guys as much as possible and um you know, we, we do take we do take um these kinds of responsibilities seriously. Um so I, I think giving Christian a call like that's what I'm gonna do and I would suggest you give him a call too in the Birmingham office there and then we'll go from there. Okay, uh I'm gonna um 
I'm going to call him here in just a little bit. And uh, thank you, Michael, for giving us a call back. And uh, we look forward to uh, to hearing from you whenever you find out about the uh, the letters that we that we sent out. Absolutely. Sounds okay. good. All right. Have a good day, Michael. Yes, sir. Okay. Bye-bye.